a puppy. It could be about anything that you want it to be about. So, um, yeah, I have some questions that I already kind of picked out from, uh, you guys submitted some stuff for me and I really appreciate that. So there's some really good questions in here that I'll probably go through. But again, you guys, this is live, so we could totally change the subject and do whatever you want. So if you guys have any, uh, anything that you want to talk about or want me to do, I will do, except for probably dance because I'm not a good dancer. So don't ask me to do that, please. Um, Danny, yes, Danny, someone did bring me a dog to a venue. Um, a couple people have, but they've been like, uh, a couple promoters have brought dogs to venues for me, which was really sweet. And then we've had some friends that have surprised me and they've showed up without telling me that they were gonna bring their, their puppy. So they surprised me and they knocked on the bus door and I opened it and there was my friends plus a cute puppy. Like what more could you ask for? So my friends know me so well and I love them and I appreciate them for doing that. All right, so I guess I'll start answering some questions. There's a lot of people asking right now just on, on this. So I'll start with some questions here. Um, who's playing Warped this year? I wish I could say that I was the Santa Claus of Warp Tour, but I'm not, so I don't <laughs> know who's playing yet. Um, who do I hope is playing? I would always hope that, let's see, like Third Eye Blonde, actually, well, she wouldn't fit in the roster at all, but I'm a huge Sarah Bareilles fan, so I, like, I think now I'm just talking about people that I would geek out for, so I was wishing they'd play Warp Tour, just in case, like, if I was playing it, that they'd be there, and I'd get to, like, secretly fangirl over them, but not so secret because I'm really bad at, um, I'm not really good at keeping that secret. I met the Backstreet Boys once and I cried, so that definitely wasn't a secret um, to them. I think I scared them, but I met them, so that's all that matters to me. Um, what has been your favorite moment shared together as a band? That's a good question. So we've been a band for like 10 years now, so that's a lot of memories. Lots of good, the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it. But obviously a lot more good than bad. Um, we all love each other, we're like a family, so we've had a lot of really good experiences. I think collectively, we all probably really liked playing the Macy's Day Parade. Um, if you see any pictures from us playing that or if you were watching it and saw us, I think we were all like bright red and like smiling. Obviously because we were happy, but we were also like frozen that way because it was so cold. So there was really no way around looking that happy because I think like the second that we got that like boost of energy and it was like, we're on the Macy's Day Parade. We were so happy and then it was like, now I can't move my face. I'm stuck like this. So that was pretty cool. And then also playing at the um, iHeart Radio Music Festival. We did that in 2013 as well. And that was really awesome because we played with like um, I think that night it was like Elton John and Queen and oh my gosh, who else played? Uh, oh, Fun played right after us. That was really cool. Robin Thicke played. He actually was, when we were sound checking for that, he was standing on the side of the stage watching us with his kid and like dancing with his kid to our music. So that was really cool, actually. It's like very surreal to see um, people like that, that you kind of like, you know, I love Robin Thicke. So um, you get to see people like that that jam out to your music. It's a really cool feeling. So, um, yeah, those are two of my favorite memories that I could say. Um, let's see. Who is the band? Our band is called The Somerset, and we are from Phoenix, Arizona. And we started in, I'm totally going to age myself now, but 2007. So we've been a band for 10 years, coming up on 10 years this year. Um, it's crazy that it's 2017. But, uh, yeah, we, we all, so me and two of the brothers grew up together in, in Arizona. Well, we all are from Arizona, but um, specifically me and the two brothers, Stephen and John, were really good friends since, like, middle school. We all played soccer together on the same, like, club team and stuff like that. So in eighth grade, we decided to start a cover band, and we were doing Blink-182 covers. That was, like, all we wanted to do. We just wanted to be a Blink-182 cover band. And we wanted to do that just to play at our school dance. Like, we wanted to be, like, the cool kids and, like, oh, we're playing Blink-182 songs at the school dance. You know, uh, that, was, that was what we thought was cool. And 
So we started the band then, and then we kind of just kept it going throughout high school and started writing our own music and stuff like that. So yeah, it ended up working out. But um, yeah, it was fun. We, we uh, did end up playing that school dance, and people didn't think we were that cool, so I guess it didn't work out. But it worked out in the long run. Um, what do you guys think of the garage in Burnsville? I'm not sure if that's a band or if that's a game or if what that is. So I'm not sure. Uh, what is your favorite city to play at? That's really hard, and I feel like I don't want to like piss people off because if I say one city and I don't say your city, you might be mad or not want us to come back. But um, let's see. One of my favorite cities to play in is obviously New York City. Those shows are always really crazy. Um, kid, like kids are awesome there and so friendly. And I just, I think New York City is one of those places that I like to play because I like to go there and visit. And then I get that whole, like, it's it's beautiful there. It's just I w I don't know if I could ever live there. So I get to experience it on tour, and that's fun and nice. And I get to do it for a few days, and then. Um, be on our way to the next city, but New York City is definitely probably one of my favorites and then I guess in the whole world to be honest I think Manila is still my favorite place to play and Maybe I'm biased because I am half Filipino, but it's not just that it's just everything about touring there is amazing um, The venues we play at are great the people are great like they treat everyone like they're the Beatles it seems like because yeah, it was just insane, the amount of treatment we got there. It was so great. And uh, the shows were really good. People are friendly. The food is great. Obviously, my family is from there, or my mom's side of the family is from there, so it's always cool to hang out with them and see them. So, uh, yeah, New York City is probably one of my favorites in the States, and then out of the States, I would say Manila. Um, let's see. Who's your favorite band to tour with? Again, this could be a dangerous question because I don't want to hurt any one of my friend's feelings, but I would say All Time Low. They're really cool guys and amazing. Like they treat us um, like also just, it's, it's really great when you tour with a band who is, treats you like, I don't know, when we first toured with them, it was like 2010 and, and they kind of helped paved the way for our band, I feel like. They were probably one of the bigger, first bigger tours that we ever got offered. And um, they didn't treat us like we weren't supposed to be on the tour or anything like that. They were very much like appreciative that we were there and very friendly and we hung out with them all the time. So that was really cool. I really liked those dudes. Um, Yellow Card, Sean Mackin's like one of my best friends. So I obviously love touring with them because I like hanging out with him. He's like a big brother to me. Um, let's see. There's a lot of bands that I love touring with. I can't, uh, the Ready Set, because I lived with him and we have a side project, Jordan, he's awesome. Um, but yeah, so those are, those are some of my favorites. Um, do you like playing in Denver? I do like Denver. Denver is beautiful. I kind of want to move there actually, but that's, I guess that's not really a secret because I just announced it live on Facebook Live, so secret's out. Um, do I mosh? No. I have, but I, I don't, like, on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't start moshing usually. But I've done it before. Um, Tonight Alive? Yes, obviously. We love hanging out with them. Good friends of ours. Um, how is it? Having Ryan Sophie for a tour manager. Oh, it's awful. He's the worst. He looks like Ryan Gosling, and he's just, like, always on top of everything, and he knows how to play, like, every instrument. I'm like, why are you so good at everything? So, yeah, it sucks having him on tour, because he's just too good at everything. Um, do I miss the Philippines and Senegal? Yes, always. Will we be coming to Boston soon again? I hope so. I like Boston, too. Um... Can Warp Tour come to Kansas? That's not near Kansas City. I, again, am, I wish I was the Santa Claus of Warp Tour and could like make things happen. I can't do that, though. I'm very sorry. Um, do you ever tour with heavier bands? 
We do, I mean, on, when we've played Warp Tours, there's obviously heavier bands, but I don't, like, it, we've never really done an actual tour with, for instance, like, A Day to Remember or something like that, or, um, I, I, everyone has their own perception of, like, what heavy is, so I, to me, like, the heaviest band I think that we've played with, well, all of them have been on Warp Tour, so I can't think of an actual, like, heavy band that we actually went on a, a club tour with. Um, do I like Sleeping With Sirens? Yes. Also really cool guys. Their tour manager is also really cool. Um, what's my favorite color? Blue. I wanted to say purple because recently I've, it's been purple, but honestly since I was a little kid, blue's been my favorite color. <laughs> I don't know. I'll think about that. And my girlfriend's gonna think about that too, because I don't know if I have one. Um, recommendations for a good first kit. That's a good question. No, no, no. Oh, I do have a really okay. My secret talent. This makes me really happy, actually, because um, <laughs> I'm really competitive. But so I'm really good. You know, when you go to like the arcades and they have that the basketball game with like the hoop that goes like forwards and backwards and you just like just keep shooting the ball for like 30 seconds and you have to make in as many as you can. I'm really really good at that. Like not a lie. I pretty much beat everyone that I play. Um, I remember I played with when we went on tour with Yellow Card I played some of those dudes and um, I won't mention any names but someone in that band was very upset because I beat him. So just saying I'm if you want to challenge me to that game, just know that that's my secret talent, so you probably shouldn't. Um, what was I saying before that? No, I can't remember. Oh, first kit. My first drum kit was, um, it was a Mapex, which is a really great kit. I loved Mapex. Um, I think that that's a really good starter kit, but right after that I had um, a PDP, which is, uh, it's called Pacific Drums and Percussion, which is um, a brand that's made by DW Drums, which is what I actually play now, is DW. Um, but they make kind of like a more affordable, like a starter kit essentially would be a PDP. So it's Pacific Drums and Percussion. And I had that kit for like, I want to say like five years before I started like actually touring. So it was, it was a great kit. I still kind of am upset that I got rid of it because it sounded so good and... I'm like a kit hoarder now though. I like have, I think I have five or six drum kits in my garage because now I can't get rid of them because I get upset because I feel like each kit has like a memory or like certain memories of a certain time period of, of whatever tours that we were on or, you know. I designed a lot of, all the new kits that I have now, I designed personally so those are ones that I think I absolutely could never get rid of because they mean so much to me. But I am absolutely a, a drum kit hoarder. I will not um, deny that. But a good moral of the story is that a good starter kit would be uh, probably a PDP or, or a Mapex. I would recommend those for sure. You'll be seeing us in Arizona for the 8123 Fest. Yes, that is coming up very soon. Actually, we just booked our flights for that today to go back to our home state of Arizona. I'm very excited for that. I think it's on January 21st, so... If anyone else is coming to that, be sure to come say hi and hang out with us. Um, let's see. How excited are you for Broad City? So excited. When does that come out, actually? I think it's coming out soon. Do you know when that comes out? I think it comes out pretty soon. So I'm very excited for that. It's like one of my top three favorite two, mm, five, I'd say. Top five. Right now I'm actually watching Breaking Bad, which I never had gotten into when I guess it was popular because... I tried to watch the first season, and then I thought it was really slow, and I didn't get into it, and then now uh, I can't stop watching it, so it is very addicting. Um, what symbols am I currently using? Still rocking the legacy. I am. Wow. You have a very good memory. Um, I do have, so I still have the Sabian setup. Um, I have the 14-inch HHX hats. I have a 20 explosion HHX crash, and then a 22-inch legacy ride and a 21-inch legacy ride. 
Um, but I use the 21 inch legacy to, um, to crash on. So I love Sabian symbols. If you are looking for symbols to get, I would always recommend Sabian. Um, what band do I play in? For anyone that's just joining, I play in a band called The Somerset. I am a drummer. I also play in a side project, but Somerset has been my main gig since I was like in middle school. So it's been a long time. If you were an ice cream flavor, what flavor would you be? I'm assuming that means what's my favorite. I'm just going to say mint chocolate chip. Um, Vader drumsticks. Yes, I do use Vader drumsticks. I use universals. They're kind of they're like a little thicker than five B's and a little, uh, like a tiny bit longer, but, um, yeah, those are what I use. Yes, Nico Cat is my side project. That is with Jordan and Cameron. Mm, what's my favorite drink, alcohol beverage? I would, I've always liked whiskey, so I'm going to stick to that, but recently I've been on a, a tequila kick, tequila sodas with some lime, been pretty good, had that on New Year's Eve. Um, let's see, what's something that happened to you while playing live that I'll always remember? That's a really good question. So I, um, let's see, I think the one that I will always remember, because it was just so traumatic for I think not just me, but like, I just remember specifically the two girls sitting in the front of the crowd that were like looking at me terrified and that's when I realized what was actually happening but um, something live that happened to me was we were playing a show I think it was on I'm pretty sure it was on the AP tour 2010 the alternative press tour and we were in Minnesota and I'd had a really bad like ear infection and like just sick just so sick and I was supposed to um, be going to the emergency room like right after the show was over because I was I felt just so ill like the day before and that day but for some reason and I have no idea why or what it what it was but I started um just bleeding out of my nose without knowing it because I'm like if you haven't seen me play when I usually play I'm just like rocking out and my hair gets in my face and like I have no conception of what's going on around me or really what I'm doing because I get in my own zone so I didn't realize that there was just blood coming out of my nose while I was playing and it was just flying all over my drum set and it was, yeah, I'm probably TMI, I'm sorry. That was, it's, it was pretty bad. But I just remember looking up at one of like, probably like during like a bridge of the song and I saw these two girls sitting in the front row and they were just like this, like, and I was like looking around me thinking maybe something's going on, but they were staring directly at me and then I looked down and noticed that there was, um, a lot of blood on my snare drum so that was probably yeah that was a memory that I don't think I'll ever be able to erase but now that I look back on it it was kind of I don't know it's kind of funny and I didn't you know it's nothing bad I was fine I just had a bad ear, ear infection and then I got it taken care of all was good um do I like chocolate milk not necessarily um, favorite Tegan and Sarah song? That's a good question. Um, on their, let's see, not this very last album, but the album before that, they had a song called Love They Say that I really liked, but I think overall, probably, uh, where does the good go? Have I met Tegan and Sarah yet? I did meet Sarah, actually. That was a very random, that was a random thing. Again, tried very hard not to fangirl. I think I succeeded that time. But um, long story short, a friend of mine, a friend of mine's brother was friends with like someone in their crew. And so we all went to, uh, out to a bar and had like dinner and drinks one night. I think this was like two years ago, it was, like, when I first moved to LA. And uh, it was, and Sarah was there. And she was a very nice, sweet woman. Um, let's see, okay, Nick, you said soccer is not a sport, 
no, that's not true. It's the most popular sport in the world, so. <laughs> uh, do I still play with a click track? Yes, so I've actually only played with a click track for my entire career. Um, I don't think it's difficult. I actually find it more difficult to play without a, a click track, to be honest with you, because I can, like, instead of having to focus on the tempo, it's just already, like, beaten the hell out of my ear, so I kind of can't avoid it, and I'm just used to, and then I can, like, focus on doing whatever else I want to do, because, yeah, it's, it's a lot harder for me to play without it, because then I'm, like, worrying about the tempo and trying to keep time and all that stuff, so. Uh, who else is playing at 8123 Fest? It's... The 8123 Fest is, um, it's the main, it's us, the Somerset, uh, Brighton, the Technicolors, uh, uh, shoot, who else is it? I think it's John the Ghost, which is, I think it's John from uh, the main solo project. Um, but yeah, I'm not really sure who else is playing that, to be honest. I think there are some uh, mystery bands and that's why I'm also worried about accidentally saying them so I tried to just list off who's on the flyer so but just it'll be fun if you are around or if you think that you can go you should go it'll be a very good time a lot of really good bands playing um, let's see what songs would I recommend for someone who's never heard our music uh, maybe listen to some, like, let's see, maybe off of our album called Legendary, Lightning in a Bottle, and then our last album was called Stories for Monday, you could listen to a couple songs off of there, um, All My Friends, it's one of my favorites, and let's see, Figure Me Out, Night is Young, I don't know, I think you should just go check it out if you would like to. Um, let's see. What other questions do we have? You were hoping I was going to say one of the mystery bands. Did I? I hope I didn't say one of the mystery bands because I might have. Don't tell on me if I did. I'm so sorry. Um, how do you go about writing your drum pieces? Do you try stuff out or kind of know what you want before you play? It kind of just depends on every album, to be honest with you. Um, so for the first couple albums it would be all of us in a studio and we would write the songs together and so my drum pieces would come along with however the song was actually on the first album to be completely honest with you um, we had to like rush the last few songs and I remember there were like three or four songs that were written in like a day and they were like alright you just gotta get in the studio and record like three or four drum tracks and just get it done so that was like very rushed for me so it was that was a little bit stressful, but normally it's just uh, writing together, and then I kind of just like write my pieces around how the music is um, being laid out, and each progression I just kind of, you know, for a verse, I come up with a verse drum, uh, like a drum track, and then uh, pre-chorus, if there is one, usually there is, and then a chorus, and then same with like going on to like a bridge, and um, so on and so forth. So I think it just depends, but, um, yeah, I, I have very much enjoyed recording. Um, let's see, Warp Tour 2017 full run. I don't know if that's asking if we're going to be on it or if Warp Tour is doing a full run in 2017, and I feel like they do a full run every year, so I'm going to say yes. Please tell me your eyeliner. My eyeliner is, I think it's just Revlon. I think it's Revlon Color Stay. Um, churches. I love Churches. Churches is a very, very good band. Was it? Oh, I guess Churches was just playing and I wasn't paying attention. Uh, what do I think about Ryan Dawson? I think he is a fantastic drummer and a great human being and I really love him. Um, what other questions do we have? Let's see. So we have, again, some really good questions that were submitted earlier on before everyone tuned into this. So I am going to go through some of these again because I feel like I get distracted with all these comments coming up on here. Very like, feel very ADD right now because I see so many things coming up and I just want to keep answering them. Um, 
but I'm going to go back to these questions that were submitted previously. So, one question here says, what got you into music at a young age? And my dad actually was a drummer, and he played music with his dad, so my grandfather. They were in a band together um, when they lived in Maryland, and they played together for, I want to say, like, very long time. I honestly don't want to say a number because I don't want to offend him if he's watching. I want to say it was maybe like in, in between five to ten years or maybe it was a little less, but I know it was, it was a good span of his life until he met my mom and then they got married. But um, he was a drummer and so he got me into drumming when I was in uh, middle school, but I was very hesitant. I really didn't want to do it. I remember he got my older brother into playing it and I was like, well, I don't want to be another member of the family playing the same instrument, like I'm going to be a, a guitar player or something like that. And so he told me that if I played drums in the school band for a year that he'd buy me a guitar. And that was like over 15 years ago and I still don't have a guitar so kind of got conned into it. But again it worked out so, uh, but that's what got me into music at a young age was my dad um, kind of accidentally forcing me into drumming. but. I loved it, so thanks, Dad. Um, let's see, what other questions do we have? How hard is it being the only girl in the band? That is, to me, not very hard. I don't know if it's just because I'm used to Like, I think growing up, I was always hanging out with guys. Like, I always had a lot of guy friends. And I, this is not, like, in a, I don't mean this in, to sound offensive or anything, but I think it'd be harder to be in a band with all girls, maybe. Um, but honestly, it's, it's, I kind of sometimes equate it to being in a fraternity. I feel like I'm maybe in a, in a fraternity because I'm in a band with like a bunch of guys and always on tour with a bunch of guys and it feels like I'm just like partying with a frat. But no, it's fun. I just feel like uh, maybe it would be harder if it was with if it was with a bunch of girls, I don't know if it would be harder or easier. I've never actually really thought about that. That's a good question, but um, let's see. Do the guys expect you to be like a guy drummer and push you hard and stuff? I think what's great about the guys in my band is that they don't look at me and say, like, you're a girl drummer. They just look at me as the drummer of the band, so I don't have to worry about, like, I just play my parts, and I think that is maybe what got me to where I am today, where I haven't really let like the, like a stereotype of a girl drummer or anything get in the way. I kind of just, if I do my job and if I don't, if I don't do it well enough, I wouldn't expect to be in the band. I wouldn't expect to be in any band. So I think it just has to do with being persistent and being good at what you do and wanting, wanting to be good at what you do. And it shouldn't matter if you're a guy or a girl. Um, I think you just do what you want to do and People will respect that. This we have here. How does being a role model for upcoming female musicians, especially drummers, and LGBTQ youth affect you and mean to you? Um, well, I mean, obviously, it's very flattering. I, I never expected to be. Um, I never expected to, to be a role model. That's like that sounds like a lot of pressure. So I don't like. I told you there'd be a puppy. There's a puppy. Kilo, say hi. <laughs> so that that's the puppy I think I promised to, to I think I saw it on my Instagram or something. She wanted to say hi. Anyways, um so I yeah, no, I never expected to be a, a role model. I feel like that term seems like there's a lot of pressure associated with it. I think I just wanted to encourage um females and, and I mean honestly anyone I wanted to encourage girls boys whatever anyone to just first of all be who they are and also like follow your dreams because there's no reason why you shouldn't um, I think if I when I was 10 or you know 10 11 12 years old if you told me that I was gonna be in a band that was touring the world at my age I would have not I wouldn't have believed you but I, I didn't really let that stop me I didn't let anything stop me not because I was just because I was a girl in a band or just because, you know, people were telling me no or like I just kind of kept being persistent with it and um, I just think I hope I can encourage other people 
to do the same because you really just have to you have to go for it because you only live once and you know why would you not try if I didn't try I would be very very you know I'd regret that in the future I would look back and, and be very bummed with myself for not giving it a good effort and and try my hardest to do something that I love and I think everyone should do that um, again regardless of your gender or regardless of your preference whatever it is you know like I, I really just I never thought I was going to be a role model but I hope that I do use my platform uh, in a positive in a positive way um, if you had to get a tattoo of one of your band members faces who would it be and why oh god I don't even know if I want to answer this question actually I'm gonna come back to that one I'm gonna think about that I kinda just started reading a question without knowing what it was and now I I don't know how to answer that one, so I'll come back to it. Um, let's see. Has anyone ever made you feel like you don't belong in a band because you're a female? I have definitely had a lot of instances like that when our band was first starting out. Um, I remember the first show we ever played out of state. We played at the Roxy in LA. I believe it was like a, a showcase that we played. Um, and I remember the sound guy came up to me and sat down on my drum set. He kind of pushed me off of it and he sat down on it and he was like, let me sound check your drums for you, but don't worry, I'll hit them like a girl. And it was just so degrading and so offensive on every level. I didn't even know like what to say back to him. I was just like raging. I think my face just turned bright red. And I remember going backstage and telling all the guys about it and they were super furious. By the way, the guys in my band get very defensive too when people do that stuff to me because um, they're just like my big brothers and and yeah they they're pretty great but anyways um, so I remember we went on stage that night and I was playing the show and I think I broke like three or four pairs of drumsticks and like the entire time I would like break one and I'd look up and try and see like where he was but um, yeah I mean there's been multiple times I again I remember on uh, on one of our tours one of the venue staff, whoever it was, I don't remember who it was, um, came up to me and took the drumsticks out of my hand and was like, you don't know what you're doing with those. Again, like trying to mess around with me or be, you know, funny or facetious or whatever it was. And um, I was just like, okay, very funny. And he just took them and started like playing with them as if he was a drummer. And he was like, yeah, like I'm going to go on stage. Again, making fun of me because he thought that I was like pretending that I was about to go on stage um, and then I like took the drumsticks back from him and I went on stage and played the show again looked over at him and his face was like his jaw dropped which to me that's like the best revenge it's just I don't really need I, do, I don't want to fight with anyone I don't want to have to like yell at anyone I'd rather just go up there do my job and kind of prove that girls can do anything guys can do and you shouldn't judge people just because they're a girl that's playing an instrument that's male dominated or something like that. So, um, yeah, I've definitely faced some of those, I've had a lot of experiences like that, but I choose, I think I choose not to remember them just because, or like, obviously I remember them, just told the stories. I just think I choose to suppress those memories because um, there's been a lot more good experiences than bad, but I'm not gonna lie and say that I haven't, I haven't faced some of those um, stereotypes in our career, so good question. Um, what's my favorite whiskey right now? Probably Bullet, Bullet Bourbon. That's my favorite. I like all whiskey though, to be honest with you. Um, let's see. There's a lot of, so I'm getting a lot of questions about, again, like females wanting to get into the music industry and if I have any advice, um, what are things like any, anything that I can like for females to do to get into this industry and again to be honest with you it's just it's persistence it's not letting anyone tell you that you can't do it just because you're a female there are so many females in this industry I think there's more I know more females than I do males like I I don't think that you have to worry I I understand that maybe you're scared because you feel like it's it's a male dominated industry which again yes there are a lot of males but I, I have made friends with a lot of females in this industry very inspirational and powerful women and they're amazing and 
I really do think it's just about um, working hard and proving that you're good at your job. Again, not because you're a female or because you're a male, just being good at what you do. So if you want to be a musician or you want to get in the music industry that way, practice. Be good at what you do. Um, just you know, keep going for it. Don't give up. Don't let people tell you that you can't do something. Um, but if you want to get into the music business, if you want to be behind the scenes, stuff like that, again, it's, I think it's like any industry, honestly. I think it's, it's in any business, you just have to work hard and go out and meet people. Go out and intern at, your, at the local venue that you like to go watch shows at. Ask them if you can work as just, you know, even if you have to work for free at first, like if that's really what you want to do and be in the music industry, you should build your resume. And if you want to be in the touring world, offer, if you have, you know, friends that are in touring bands or friends that know touring bands, ask them if they need a crew member, if, whether it's a merch person or someone to help load in the gear for free. Like a lot of people I've met in this industry have been people that, yes, they started from the bottom, but they worked really hard and got their way up to the top by just working their asses off because they really wanted it. So again, doesn't have to do with if you're a female or a male, just work your ass off. Um, hello. I feel like there's a lot of people that just tuned in, so I'm going to say hi to you as well. There's videos professionally at your concerts. I do. I'm actually friends with a lot of um, videographers and photographers that come to the shows. Again, that's the same thing. If you want to get into that in the music industry, a lot of them start off by offering, going to a local venue and offering to just take pictures, asking if they can take pictures for one song even, even if it's the first song of the set or one song in the middle of the set or 30 seconds of a song. It's just them going out and asking. It's all about just doing. I can't tell, you can't go to school for it. You can't, I mean, you can, but I'm just saying you, regardless, you have to go out and just do it. You can't, um, can't sit back and hope that someone's gonna just hand it to you. So, um, yeah, the first thing to do, again, if you wanna get into something like photography or touring or anything like that is start off locally wherever you are and get get in good with your local venue um let's see what do i think of everything's fine i loved everything's fine we recorded that album again here in la in north hollywood actually which i don't which is crazy because i ended up living very close to north hollywood to where we recorded that album um and it was a really great experience we recorded with john fields we did it over, I want to say it was like a month or maybe two months and it was like one or two weeks on and then a week off and one or two weeks on and it was, he really challenged us for that album which is really great. He's a really great producer. Um, but yeah, no, I love, I do love that album. I love all of our albums and I hope you do too. Um, all right, I'm going to keep going back to some of these questions. What's my favorite song to play live? Um, that's really tough. I, I really can't pick a favorite. Um, I think recently, so on the last tour that we just did, I would say it was one of the new songs off of our album. I think it really just has to do with crowd interaction all the time to me. So my, my favorite songs change all the time depending on um, the crowds and how the crowds react to the songs. Honestly, playing uh, this song called All My Friends off my last album was really fun because I didn't expect the crowd to um, love that song as much as they did. And I feel like that reaction is its very exciting. It's a great feeling to look out into the crowd and, and see people singing along to your songs. And it's pretty great. Um, do I have a favorite B-side that I wish made the cut? Yes, I do. That's a very good question, Justin Chapman. There is a song that we had called, um, uh, I think I fell in love and it was supposed to go on legendary and then it was supposed to go on, well, supposed to because I got really mad and I threw a hissy fit. This is my girl side being the only girl in the band. If you ask the guys the question of what's it like having a girl in the band, they'll be like, well, she throws a hissy fit sometimes this happened. I did throw a hissy fit. So I threatened, um, I threatened to quit. I was like, but again, being kind of facetious, kind of being facetious. I can say that now, 
but at the time I was very serious about it. Um, it was just one of my favorite songs ever. It's called I Think I Fell in Love, and I thought it was a great song. I had no idea like why we didn't really use it, but for some reason it didn't make the cut on Legendary. And so then I remember we played it live um, for, it was, there's a nonprofit organization called To Write Love on Her Arms. And we played one of their heavy and light benefit shows. And we played that song. That was one of the songs that we played because I was like, oh, we might as well just play a B-side. You know, it's a fun show. And, um, and right before we were, when we were rehearsing, I was like, by the way, this, it has to go on the next album where I'm quitting. I like threatened to quit. Um, and so for the longest time it was on the list of being on the album, but then there were some, as things go in the music industry, like issues with getting like credits and writing for certain people and whatever it was. So it, it ended up just not making the album, not making the cut. So I did not end up quitting because we did try to put it on the album. It just wasn't on our end that it didn't get on the album, but yeah, I did throw a little bit of a, of a hissy fit for that, so. Oh, so some of you heard it, because you said, I think I found love was good at Heavy and Light. Yeah, it was a, it was a good song. I really wish that that had made the cut. Um, do you want to comment on Love the Love You Have or In Color? How was the recording? Impossible to find any info on these releases. Yeah, so that's funny. Love, I, those were our first two EPs. I've, I don't even know anyone really knew about Love the Love You Have because that was such an independent, like I think we only printed a thousand copies of that and we just released it in Arizona, had a CD release party and it was mostly just our friends that came to that. But um, that was something that we did, again, while we were still in high school, uh, Love the Love You Have, and we recorded seven songs. This was in Arizona. Josh wasn't even in the band yet. We were, um, we were a four-piece and recorded this album, sorry, not an album, again, it was an EP, um, and then just put the songs on MySpace. These were like the MySpace days, and there was one specific song that got the attention of our first record label, which was called Militia Group, and that was She's Got the Rhythm. So for those of you that have In Color, which is actually on Spotify, so no one knows about Love the Love, love, the love You Have because that didn't even... Again, that was like so independent that no one knew about it. We only released like a thousand copies. But In Color was what got picked up. And we recorded um, an EP for Militia Group and that included She's Got the Rhythm on that because that was what essentially got our band signed um, at first with Militia Group was that song. So yeah, the uh, recording process for In Color was, um, it was, it was a, Wow, it's so hard to think. I'm, I feel so old. This was so long ago. <laughs> this was like 10 years ago. We did it in Arizona. Uh, we did it with someone named Matt Grabe, who also produced then our first full-length album, which he did at the Red Bull Studios. Um, but yeah, we did In Color with Matt Grabe. Um, I, I honestly don't remember it, the, the process that much, to be completely honest with you. I just wanted to, I guess, get clear of the story of Love the Love You Have was right before that, but no one really knew about that. So it's crazy that you even knew that that was an album. It's pretty cool. Play She's Got the Rhythm at 8123. I don't remember the last time we played that song, to be honest with you, so I don't think, I don't know. Don't get your hopes up, but if you're coming, well, maybe we will. Um, You paid seventy, what? Seventy dollars for the love that we have. That's crazy. That's awesome that you have that. I don't even think I have that. <laughs> I don't think I still have a copy of our first EP. So that's pretty crazy. Um, what's the easiest TSS song to learn to play? I'm assuming you're asking for maybe drum wise. Um. That's a good question. I'll get back to you on that one. I will get back to you on that. Um, all right, let's see. There's some more questions over here that I'll do. I think I only have a couple more minutes because I think I started this a little late, but I will go for a few more minutes. Um, are there any tips or workouts you do to stay in shape as a drummer? So 
usually before I go on tour, I try to get into some sort of workout routine. Um, this last year before we started our cycle, I had gotten into boxing and that was really great. And honestly, it's just, it's just so you can honest, not die on stage because we play for like an hour and a half and drumming is quite a workout itself. So, um, I try my best to stay in shape as much as possible. I don't know how successful I am at that all the time, but I do try. Um, and then to, before I play, there's a lot of workouts and like, I wouldn't say workouts, but stretches that I like to do. And I feel like a lot of drummers do them because uh, again, you're playing for an hour and a half and it, and drumming is like, is a workout in itself. So you should be stretching and doing stuff like that. Um, I would show you, but I am holding a phone and don't have drumsticks near me, unfortunately. So, um, as a girl drummer, you are someone I look up to. Are there any girl drummers you look up to? Yes, I actually grew up loving Sheila E. Um, I think because, again, my dad really got me into her. And it was, it, it's, I know it still is kind of rare to, to see female drummers, but at the time, Sheila E. was like the female drummer, I feel like, of her time. So it might be like a stereotypical answer, but if you look up Sheila E., she's, she's amazing. She's great. Um, she was definitely the one drummer that I, I really looked up to as far as female drummers go. Let's see. Hi Jess, do you get any reward and inspiration from traveling fans? It's kind of like they're giving back, but what's it like from your end? We've had a lot of traveling fans that have, actually on this last tour we did, we had two girls that bought tickets and followed the entire tour, which is insane because that's a very, uh, that's a long time to, to want to be away from a bed, I feel like, driving in your car every night and and I just have so much respect for them for doing that. And, and it really is, it's amazing, it's great. Like I remember talking to them the first day of the tour and they told me they were gonna follow the whole tour. And so um, we ended up, I think our merch guy gave them uh, access to all of our meet and greets because it was like, what can we do to give back to you? Because we feel like so honored that you are coming to every single show. So it is really cool. It is, there's definitely a reward from seeing that fans want to travel to see us anytime there's fans at a show. I mean, it's such a reward to see that people still like coming to see us. So, all right, well, I'm going to start wrapping this up probably in then like a minute or two. So if there's anything else you want to ask me, um, you can ask me on here. I feel like I tried to go through a little bit of the questions that were, were sent in beforehand. I'm sorry if I didn't get to yours. Um, again, I got really distracted with all the questions coming in through my phone, so uh, yeah, if there's any other questions, get them in now and I will try my best to answer them. Uh, what bands would you like to tour with? Hmm. Again, Third Eye Blind, Jimmy Eat World. Uh, I would personally like to tour with Sarah Bareilles, uh, Antigan and Sarah. Um, let's see what other favorites. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with those for now. Opinions on Thickest Thieves. I'm assuming you're talking about our song, Thick as Thieves, and I like that song. Um, when are you back in the UK? What are you doing between now and your next tour? Uh, I'm not sure when we're back in the UK. We were just there, let's see, in May, I think it was. So I'm not sure what's going on with the next, uh, the next UK tour. We'll see. Um, have I ever met? Yes, I have met mm -hmm. Lynn Gunn. She's a very friendly person. What wood sounds the best on a kit to you, maple or birch? I have um, maple mahogany on my new kit. I personally have always loved maple kits. And so on this last kit, I got um, a maple mahogany just because I was doing a tour of, of the factor, the DW factory with um, 
someone that works there and he recommended doing the maple mahogany which sounds amazing so if you get a chance to do that you should get a maple mahogany but I usually before I went with that I, I just went with pure maple uh, what's my favorite movie Cruel Intentions is probably one of my favorite movies ever and also uh, When Harry Met Sally that was a good one all right so I feel like I should probably wrap this up now it is getting late I don't know where you guys all are but for me it's almost to my bedtime so um, I just wanted to say thank you for tuning in again thank you to the Entertainment Institute and to to Warp Tour for letting me do this I've never done a Facebook live chat before so this was very fun very entertaining for me to to watch I still I think I'm still confused with everything that's going on on the screen so I really need to just figure out I'm very technologically just not on it so um, but yeah thank you guys for tuning in and for asking me questions and uh, I'm sorry if I didn't get to any of your questions or if I didn't uh, answer anything you wanted me to answer and if I didn't show enough puppies or if I didn't uh, do something that you wanted me to do again I can't dance so I'm sorry that I didn't do that um, but yeah all right thank you guys and uh, Hopefully, I will uh, see you guys at the 8123 Fest for whoever is coming. Be sure to come and say hi to me. All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs>